Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're starting out with my office today because we're going to do a little design work on the computer. What I'm after today is to make a piece of wall art and I was inspired by some photos I saw online of airplane cutouts and not your typical just outline but showing all the panel lines and such. And uh, I want to make something a little bit larger than our laser bed. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about this and I hope you maybe learn something or are inspired to make your own. So let's jump right into it. What I'm going to show you here is the file that we're going to be working with. I came out here and was looking for something uh, for you, Corsair. It's one of my favorite airplanes from World War II. And I was going looking for this kind of this outline look with all the panel lines, all the detail, um, but something that would be able to make more of a wireframe type of design. So uh, for $4, I will save myself the hassle of trying to draw this out myself. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at these files, do read the description. They may have some terms and conditions which say this is for personal use, this is not for commercial use. You just want to make sure that however you're using it, now I'm making this personally so it's not. it shouldn't matter, but if you're looking to resell items made with this, you may want to reach out to the artist and make sure that they are okay with that and it's within their terms. Now uh, let's jump over into Lightburn. So I've brought in this file and uh, we're going to be doing this on the Atom Stack. A20 Pro. It's a device I'm currently working on a review for. So this is a little bit of a teaser on that machine working with this product. So that has a 400 millimeter square working area. And uh, I want this piece of wall art to actually be bigger. So right now, as you see it, I've got it. It's roughly 13 and a half inches or 344 millimeter. So I mean, I could stretch this out a little bit and try to maximize the cutting area uh, here. We get it to about 388 millimeters or 15.3. And if I was to rotate it to maybe get it angled um, to really try to maximize this, the largest I can probably squeeze on here um, is, uh, you know, 373. We'd have to actually measure this, but um, it's still not the size I want. Plus, we end up with a lot of extra waste area. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be breaking this into three pieces to be able to enlarge it, really maximize the cutting area for each piece, and then we'll be gluing this back together. So uh, a lot of people do like to work in Lightburn as their primary design software. Uh, it is very powerful. It has a lot of tools, uh, but sometimes when you get into some more advanced features, it, while you can do it, it, it might not be the best tool. So what I'm going to be doing here is I want to break this image right here because this is the most logical spot to break the wings and uh, make this uh, three pieces. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm actually wanting to kind of draw in a line here. Now, if you wanted to do this in Lightburn, you'd want to first make sure this is all grouped, which I've already done. So this is one group. We're going to switch over from the black layer to the second layer. Uh, we're going to go with blue here. And you could start playing with, you know, drawing an ellipse and then manipulating it to try to get it to the right shape. And then you'd have to break it apart um, and create a path. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to want to have a small straight key here and a small straight key here and then an arc that follows this. Uh, but I don't quite have the flexibility of the tools here that I'm looking for. So what I'm actually going to do is draw, uh, jump over into one of my design tools that I use a lot and uh, that is SketchUp. So we're going to jump into that software. I'll show you how to do it there and then we'll re-import this back in here. Okay, so I've brought the model into SketchUp. And uh, SketchUp is a tool I've used for years. It's a uh, 3D modeling tool, but you can also do 2D uh, design work. It's not as powerful as, say, AutoCAD or Fusion 360. Uh, it's something that I started working on back when it was developed by Google, and it was free, and so old habits die hard. You could definitely work with this in uh, Inkscape, uh, Illustrator. What I'm looking for is I want to be able to manipulate both uh, in size uh, and, and uh, measurements. Um, but then also I have some tools to create things like arcs and lines, and then we'll be able to group, uh, cut and group these things together. So we've brought this in, and the first thing I want to do is kind of measure it, because I'm going to be going for roughly a 36-inch or larger item. So right now it's measuring 13 or so inches. So I'm actually going to resize this to 
36. Now it's scaled it up. And just to show where we're at, let's go over there roughly to there. And yeah, we've got a 36 inch wingspan. So we're dealing in true units that we want to end it up at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this all. I'm going to make it a component, actually make it a group. That way I can draw over the top of it without interfering. So I'm going to zoom in on this. And what I want to do is kind of find my parallel points, which is one right here. We're going to go perpendicular to that line if we can. In about halfway. Actually, we'll bring this a little bit closer. That's a little farther out than I want. So I'm going to bring that in about halfway, and this one's probably going to have to go a little further in. I'm in about halfway there. That'll give us our reference point. And then there's two ways I can do this. I can draw a two-point arc and try to estimate there, which is pretty close. Otherwise, I can also draw what's called Bezier curve, start and stop point, and this will allow us a little more flexibility get this more exacting in the middle of that arc. So that looks pretty good right there. So why I didn't just take this end to end is I wanna have these act as kind of key points when I put this back together. Those flat spots will try to nest in together, whereas if I had this arc all the way, you could actually have that angle overhanging a bit. These will help key it into each other. So just kinda of wanna double check that that looks good and I'm happy with that. And then what I'll do is I will then ungroup this and explode it. That will cause these to start interacting with each other. And then what I can do is take the highlight everything I need and I can do a copy of that. Like so. And then what I'll do is I'll come down here and delete the items I don't need. All right, so now I have that piece and I can actually make that a group. And then I would do the opposite up here. I would delete everything but that. And then we're gonna repeat this on the other side and uh, we'll come back and show you where we're at. All right, so I completed drawing both sides. I've got the key marks here and the arcs, both panels. And then I went ahead and broke these apart into the three sections that I need and each one is grouped individually. And uh, then what I can finally do in SketchUp is I can actually do a file export 3D model and we can do it as a DXF and that will allow us to import into Lightburn and then we can do the rest of our file manipulation in there. So, okay, we're back in Lightburn. We've got it set up for our AtomStack A20. Uh, and so it's a 400 millimeter square cutting area. And we're gonna go ahead and import that DXF file we set up in SketchUp. So we're gonna come here and import, go 36 inch wide. And here are the parts. I left the top one in just so we can see. This is the hopeful end result and the size of the item. So as you see, if we wanted to try to cut this whole thing out, it would not fit in one piece. And that's why we broke it up. So what we can do, let's come over here and look at how we can get this to fit It's close. I am going to see if the laser, and sometimes you, when it's 400 by 400, I like to cut it back by, you know, 5% just to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. But we will see if this fits in there. If not, we will need to break this up into two cut files. So I'm going to go ahead and play with this uh, file. I'm going to tweak it, try to get uh, the best speed and um, power that I feel we can get. And then uh, I will make sure I've got a piece of material cut, get it prepped in the laser, and we'll jump into the workshop see how it works so hang tight we'll be out in the shop in just a minute
All right, we're back down in the basement workshop with our diode lasers. And so we're gonna be running this on the Atomstack A20 laser. This is a machine that was recently sent to me for review. And this is part of my process. I don't like to just run a few things and try to tell you what I think about it. I like to use it on some actual projects of mine and, and really get a feel for them. So that's what we're doing today. This machine does have an integrated air assist in it. It is a 20 watt diode laser, so it's got a lot of power. And uh, we're gonna be using that to blast through this quarter inch material. This is uh, some material I picked up from Home Depot. It is, uh, it's got a lighter core. It's uh, not as dense as some of their harder wood, like their maple and their oak. Uh, it's sanded on one side and a little rougher on the other. We're more worried just about this finished uh, surface on this side and as well we could paint it when we're done. But being that this is just kind of an artistic, uh, crafty type thing, I'm not worried about structure. Uh, I'm not worried about uh, its density. I want to make sure it cuts cleanly and the pieces can be pit fit together and hung on the wall. So we're gonna get this in the machine. We are going to frame it up, make sure it does fit without any issues, uh, adjust and maybe tweak any of the settings now that we're down in the shop and uh, we'll get to cutting. All right, the job finished, it fit on here okay, and it looks like things cut out okay, uh, but here's where we see how well it did, if things, how many things drop out. I'm expecting to have a few little nibs to fix, but so far so good. So we look at the backside here, and it actually looks pretty clean. There's a few small sections I'll zoom in on as we flip this over, but this is where, you know, having a nice set of exacto uh, blades, razor blades, so yeah, we'll need to just touch up a few spots there but that's the nature of the wood is there's just inconsistencies in it and you're going to sometimes have to go back and clean it up that's why you don't always want to run it at 100 percent of your fastest speed you think and cut it out because you'll get those spots and the more of them you had the tougher it's going to be cut out so let's get this over to the workbench and take a better look at it i got this over here on the workbench and a lot of these are still going to fall out i just didn't want them falling out into the laser bed uh, but one thing that would be really good to have if you're doing cutting with a laser is Get yourself a hobby knife and then pick yourself up some extra blades. Uh, I'll have links to these down below. What these do is twofold. You can just use it to kind of poke stuff out to get the bulk of things that are maybe just being held in by friction. But where it really shines is when you need to maybe cut a little bit of a piece loose. So on the back side here we do have some areas that need some attention. So like right here, if you can see that, we've got a whole line and this is just, it could be a glue spot, it could be a hard spot in the wood, but you'll have those little areas where it just couldn't cut through. And that's where we just take the razor blade, just score it real quick. It is, you know, probably 95 the way through already we just need to finish up these little areas that had an issue and uh, things will pop out so I'm gonna go ahead and do that get all these parts freed so this is an area where there is definitely a like a glob of glue and that's where it caused it to have some issues cutting through and uh, so you'll get these spots in plywood especially. Um, sometimes you get it in regular wood with knots and uh, maybe thicker areas of sap and resin. But All right, we've got our parts cut out and they're looking good. We had just a couple of small issues with areas where there's some glue and such, but um, we were able to get it all out. And the nice thing with that air assist on the Atom stack uh, really any laser is is very clean. Uh, it, it creates a clean cut on the front side and even on the back side there's really not any charring to be 
seen. So that is one of the huge advantages of using that air assist. So, uh, and now when I was putting these together, I mentioned uh, wanting to get this keyed together. So you see we have our arc and these pieces will fit together. Now if I didn't have those little straight areas, top and bottom, this might be able to rotate out, but here you see they're resting tightly on there and that's gonna lock them in place at the right angle, the right shape. So we're gonna break out the glue, get this put together and see how it looks when it's done. All right, so the simple tools of the trade here. We're gonna be gluing this together with some CA glue, cyanoacrylate, uh, otherwise known as super glue. Um, <clears throat> the, this is an extra thick variety. Uh, you make it in different viscosities. I like this for when I'm making a joint. It may or may not be too tight and I don't want to make an extra mess everywhere. If they were a really tight joint and a real porous wood like this, you could get by with the thinner kind. But uh, as you'll see when I put this on, this is a, you can actually build up more of a bead and then have it squeeze out a little bit, clean up the squeeze out. So with that also to make it set up faster, we're using some accelerators. So this is a Starbond. Uh, aerosol variety. Uh, there are a few different brands. Um, it's very helpful when working with CA. And then anytime I am gluing things up with CA, I like to use a little wax paper. It just helps pr keep the uh, material from sticking to the surface when the glue does squeeze out. So we're just going to cut off a small piece of that so we can use it underneath our joints as we're going. So we will start out. I'm going to lay this down kind of in the center. That way both sides are going to be covered. We're going to just double check the fit of these. So that one looks like it's going to fit in nicely there. This one does look like it's going to fit in nicely there as well. So very simple process. Take our glue. I'm going to add it to one end. So as you see here, I'm going to create a bead just right in the middle. And then that will squeeze out onto the rest. And on this side, I'm going to take the accelerator, just hit it real quick with a little bit. Now you're going to want to be quick and get these lined up because that will set off in a matter of seconds. Set these down, press them together, hold it for about five seconds. And that CA accelerator should kick off. And there you go. We've got a glue joint. Now it's going to take a little bit to fully cure that's being held in place. Let's go ahead and repeat that for the other side. But there we go. Both sides are attached and uh, I will zoom out and show you the whole thing. All right, and so there you have it. We have our 36 inch wide Corsair cutout um, glued together. I'm gonna let this cure up just a little bit more and then we might do just a little bit of light sanding on this just to smooth out the front. And uh, then I'm gonna find a place to hang it on the wall. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I do like to mix in project videos along with product reviews. So I hope you found this educational or informational at least. And uh, if you have any questions about things that I talked about in this video or anything else, do leave a comment down below. I try to get back to those as quick as I can. Uh, I will also have some affiliate links down below to some of the items and the products used in this video. Uh, I do get a small kickback from those. And all that does is go to help me continue to buy materials and such to provide content to this channel, uh, but no pressure. I'll be putting out more videos in the future. I do try to get out every other week or so. This is a, a fun hobby of mine. I hope you enjoy it as well. So if you uh, are liking the content here, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. I will be back with more projects shortly. And until next time, I hope you can get out into your workshop and make something too.